All right, so this is part three of the comment create serializer function. Um, so in this one, we are going to actually create the view for it and see if we can actually create a new comment. Um, so let's go ahead and jump in to Sublime Text and we're gonna make a create API view. So let's go ahead and uncomment out the one we had before in our comment views. And we're gonna of course call this comment create API view. And the query set is comment.objects.all. Serializer class we can get rid of, perform create we can also get rid of. Um, so now what we have to do is define get serializer class and this takes self and then we're gonna return some class, right? So this should look maybe a little promising for us because now that we have this function of get serializer class, that means we can use our function of create common serializer right in here. So we're gonna import that create common serializer and we're gonna return it in just a moment. I'm gonna actually comment all, or copy all of the arguments as well. So I'm gonna copy that whole thing here so we make sure we're doing it correctly. Um, model type, so on and so forth, comma. And I also wanna add user in here too. So user equals to self.request that user. So we're gonna do it. We're gonna do some slight changes here and we're probably gonna run into some, some errors that we need to fix. Um, so a couple things here. First of all, we wanna add in some Git requests to the actual URL that we're gonna end up using. So we're gonna do model type first and we're gonna call it self.request dot get dot get and we'll say type in the case of for our end users or the api users we're just going to call it type the comment the type that the the thing's going to be commented on so post or if you had lecture or if you had um, video or whatever like that is what it's going to be doing and then slug we're going to do self dot request dot get dot get and slug and then finally parent id equals to self dot request dot get dot get parent id and now we're going to pass these things through with our serializer there we go slug and parent id you can have a default value so after this we could say none right so if you do comma and then that's what the default value would be if it is not there cool so now that we've got this let's go ahead and wrap this into our url i'm going to import it into our view and let's actually reorganize a little bit there we go. And now I'm gonna go ahead and copy the list view, uh, list URL route and just do the create stuff. Go, there we go. All right, so now we've got our everything all set up. Let's go into create. And we got an unexpected keyword argument called user. Not surprisingly, because if we go into our views, we added user here, but if we look at our serializer, I don't have user being passed. So let's pass the user. And I'll say user is none. And down here now, where we go to create, I'll just say if user, so that is the past user, then we will say user equals to user. And actually we'll just say main user. Let's say main user equals to user. And we'll say else main user is just the default that we already created or listed off there. And then here we'll just put that main user down inside of the create function that we made already. So main user being, you know, the default user that's actually submitting this stuff um, versus the default user that we have here. So the requested user and we have is authenticated. So they actually have to be authenticated to make this even work. All right, so we've got that. Let's go back in and we get another argument error. Comment create serializer object has no attribute parent ID. So parent ID is the problem. And this is comment create serializer. So let's go look at the comment create serializer and let's look for parent ID. We pass it as an argument. Ah, and then we got another one. It says self.parent ID. That's the problem right there. And it's because we're saying self as in the comment create serializer does not have a parent ID. So we get rid of that. There's a little error being fixed. Okay, cool. If I hit post, it says content cannot be blank. So I put some content, hit post, and it says non-field errors. This is not a valid content type. Hmm, why is that? Well, it has to do with what we passed. So if we go back into our view, we don't have any request up here saying the type. So let's put something. I'll say type equals to post. Let's try it again. Type equals to post. 
and it's still saying that it's not a valid one. So let's actually type equals to post, press enter. There we go. And now type it out, do it. Boom, this is not a valid slug for this content type. So the content type looks like it's working. So we'll just add and slug equals to, well, let's get an actual slug. Um, I opened up a actual post that we already have, which is my title, that is the slug. And now we press enter again, type something out, hit post. And now we're getting comment manager has no attribute slug. So some more errors that we've come up with, go into model. This is again, comment manager, comment manager. Um, I know exactly where it is because, um, well, I have a lot of experience doing this. This is something you'll get over time, but more important is thinking, okay, well, it says comment manager object has no attribute slug. So obviously there's something wrong with the comment manager. More specifically, it will often show you the ex, uh, exception location. It says create by model type line 25. So we go in there, models, line 25, and it says self.slug. Another one of those little errors should just be slug because that's the argument being passed. We save it, refresh, hit continue. Global name instant is not defined. And again, it's giving us where, it's, where it is, line 35, we go back line 35, and we forgot an E here, or more importantly, I forgot an E there. Refresh, continue, bada bing, actual, it actually worked. We actually created a comment on my title. We look back into our actual post, refresh in here, and we should see, well, it looks like we have a few comments here, so let's try a new one and just say, yet another new comment, exclamation mark, hit post, go into my title, refresh, yet another new comment. And now that we've got that, and we also have an ID for it, let's use that ID and re reply to that comment. And we'll just say, and parent ID equals to six. We're gonna press enter and say, reply here. Notice I'm not selecting that other parent, hit comment. Reply here is there, parent shows up. We refresh in here. Ooh, we got a comment there. We hit thread, bada bing it is now working. Um, so our comment serializer, there's one thing I wanna do and that is get rid of this parent. We don't need it in there. It's not necessary, especially when we're creating something. So I added another create, parent is gone, it's not necessary. But notice the URL itself has a few parameters in there that are also being passed in addition to the data that we're actually pushing, right? So this stuff is not as important as this. These are more git methods, right? So that's why it is in a git request. We're getting the type being post. We're getting the slug being my title. We're getting the parent ID. We're not actually setting any information here. We're setting the information in the actual post request. So that is something that's pretty important to note is that right here, this is not setting anything. It is getting stuff. The setting part happens with the post request with that particular content. Um, but now, ladies and gentlemen, we have our common create API view working. It We went through a lot and hopefully it was complicated because it is complicated. If you got this right off the bat, well, I am super envious because I definitely did not. The key things to take away from here is when you're creating a class, you can put that class inside of a function as long as you return that class. Not instantiated, so that is not an instance of it. So if I put parentheses here, that would mess everything up. So returning it as a class means I could use it as a class. Our view then handles everything that we need to pass in here. Now this is really important because we can also look at another serializer function and that's in this API. Um, let's take a look at the post create. We could wrap this into a class. So if we did define post create so on and then we put user equals to user we could and override what we did in our view which was this by simply setting that class just as we did with the serializer so it'd, it'd be a very simple way of what we just did but we are all about getting what's most practical and most effective in the case of doing this it's not practical it is much more practical to do it as we already did which was performing the serializer save just like that. But as far as our create comment serializer, this is what it's all about. And again, if, if this was not confusing in the last three videos, if they were super confusing for you, watch it over again, 
do it over again and do it several times. Try and make your own changes to it as you see fit. Um, this stuff right here, or the actual class of the comment serializer, is not much different than anything we've seen before. Um, the new stuff is the initializer function, the validate, and how we did the validate, and all that. So if you have any questions on this, and uh, please feel free to ask them in the comments below. Would love to hear your questions and comments about this. This is about as hard as we're gonna get in the API. Um, I don't imagine getting much harder than this. There isn't really gonna be anything else that will be harder than this, so keep that in mind too. Because um, when it comes to the API, just how we built this, is just it's just complicated. We have to take into account all the different things that we could be doing. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.